Uh, in our final section of the night, we're going to hear from our fashion and games industry collaborators, Kate Harvey and Connie Reid. Hey guys, um, thanks for everyone uh, for inviting us on to this. It's really exciting to be here and um, it's been really inspiring hearing all the other people talking about the fashion and games industries. Um, I'm Kate Harvey. Uh, I'm a, tech, a printed textile designer um, I'm living in Dundee just now. And uh, this is Connie. Hey, um, I'm Connie and I'm a games designer at Pog Size Hands, which is an indie studio um, in the Dundee. Um, and I'm also the co-founder and director of Conglomerate Games, um, which is a game, which is a games company that focuses on serious games. Yeah. Um, so uh, what was the game with the cystic fibrosis, Connie? Because that was so cool what you were telling me about earlier. Yeah, um, I could go into it. Uh, I was going to go into it later, but yeah, I'll jump into it now. So um, while I was at uni in third year, um, during the professional project module, um, during my game design production um, course, um, there was a brief where I had, where I, me and my team worked with um, Microsoft and Project Physio um, to create a game um, to help children with uh, cystic fibrosis do their physiotherapy. Um, so there, uh, well, before I went into games, I used to study nursing um, where I worked with children who had cystic fibrosis. And I kind of thought to myself, wow, it would be amazing if um, if I can combine the knowledge that I had from when I did nursing and bring that into games. That'd be so cool. So then we eventually um, continued to work on that. And then that company has been up and running now uh, fully for about a year. Um, I'll just talk a wee bit about like what I do and like my field. Um, so I studied textile design at Duncan and Johnson, um, and I studied there from 2013 to 2017. Um, I always totally was obsessed with textiles, and uh, I just and, and, and like fashion itself. I just loved it so much, and um, I think I, I I originally wanted to be a fashion designer. And then I sort of learned a bit more about fashion and like all the pattern cutting and everything. And I think I got a bit scared of that. And suddenly I was like, oh, my God, like the bits that I love about it are like all the prints and all the embellishments and all the decorative side of everything. Um, and then textiles kind of encompasses all of that together. And then there's like the, also the sort of more like technological side. Um, I personally haven't like ventured into that at all, really, within my own work. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I'm just working on um, making prints with heat transfer vinyl. Um, <clears throat> I, I did. I was trained in screen printing, but um, since like the pandemic and everything, um, I was I was doing a um, residency right before that, and I was doing bits of printing. And then as soon as I couldn't go into the print room anymore, this was at DJ CAD as well. Um, as soon as I couldn't go into the print room anymore, I was just thinking, how can I do printing at home, but in a way that's like easy for me? Um, I don't have that much money, so I didn't really know how to like, um, I, I couldn't really like buy all the equipment I would need to do proper screen printing at home. And I had bits of like vinyl left over, so I was cutting out shapes with them. And a lot of my work's kind of collage -y anyway. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I just kind of managed to develop from, from like screen printing to like finding a way to like create prints at home, but like without all the equipment. Um, Connie, see if you go down a bit, there's a few pictures mm -hmm. I've uploaded um, on the board. So here Please is like, here. yeah, that's it. Um, so this is my work down here with the jumpers and the sweatshirts. Um, I've also, I also kind of translate that into digital prints. So there's a scarf as well in the corner, which is like um, the prints I would make I kind of physically hand cut them out and then I'd like put them into Illustrator and shake them around. Um, and then also the towels, that was a collaboration I did with uh, Local Heroes and the VNA, which was really exciting. And that was like one of the main, that is like one of the main kind of points in my career where I felt like I felt things started to like shift a little bit into being able to do what I want to do. Like, quite consistently and like being kind of approached by different projects um, with different projects by different people. And it's, it's quite exciting. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been quite a busy year for me. Um, Sorry, do you want me to jump back up to the top? 
Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, and so how did how did you get in? So you got into gaming when you were young, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that'll be a good segue, actually. We'll jump up to here. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So I, um, my passion for gaming just started when I was really young. I can't even remember when. Um, I think I was playing games before I could talk or before I was walking. Mm -hmm. um, like there's a picture here of me. This is me. Uh, I think I must have been two. This would have been 1997. And then my sister's also here trying uh, to play with the Nintendo 64. And it's just always been a fascination that I've had. Um, I play a lot with my mum and my sister. Um, and I also really love design and I always have. Um, I remember when I was in primary school, I would make board games out of cardboard um, and I'd just make them and then I'd force my mum and my sister to play them with me I don't know how much my mum enjoyed that I don't know how good they would have been um but she was always really supportive of me um while I was in high school design was always my favorite thing to do and um, product uh, product design was my favorite subject at school um and when I was in the third year uh, I got a really good opportunity to do my work experience at Real Time World which was a games company that used to be in Dundee and um, they're no longer open anymore but um yeah, it was a really good opportunity uh, for me to learn some stuff about the games industry <clears throat> quite early on. How about you? Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I as as it kind of says there as well. Like, I um, I had really inspiring family and friends. So, like, my mom works in theatre and is um, always and always has, and it's just nice to have that kind of creativity like really close to you because it makes you it kind of encourages you. But um and yeah so like I, when I was at uni I did an internship with Isolated Heroes when I was in like 2014 um and it was like I, I basically was just going along and like sewing all these sequin patches for them but I think it was just being in that kind of creative environment um seeing that it is possible to like start from to start your own thing and to do it from like the ground up um it was really inspiring um <clears throat> and then after I graduated, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to continue, to be honest. Um, I was a bit kind of burnt out from like the degree and everything. So um, I, I moved I moved to Glasgow for a bit and then I moved to Australia for a bit and I was doing all these kind of crappy jobs and I was just like, oh, this isn't really what I want to do. Um, and then I'd, I'd met uh, Ellie Vallely. Vallely? Oh no, I'm saying her name wrong. She's going to kill me if she ever sees this. But um, she does <laughs> squint clothing. Um, and I met her. She lived in Melbourne as well. And I met her. And um, <clears throat> I remember one time I, I didn't have a job for a while. And uh, she was, and she needed some help with the market. So I was going around and helping her quite a lot. And it was just that was another example where I was like, oh, this is this like really cool person that's like started their own their own like label and is doing so well and it's just very inspiring to be around that and I think all those little all these little things kind of niggled away and eventually I was like mm -hmm. no I need to do this yeah <laughs> I was going to try and do it um and yeah I think we 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 were talking about this earlier where it was like you have a kind of need to do something creative you just kind of have to follow it because I think if you try and ignore it it just makes you a bit unhappy yeah <laughs> and yeah and I've certainly felt a lot better in the past couple of years just from like doing what I like doing um mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure like with me and similar to that um I initially when I left high school I went into child nursing and then two years long I was sitting there thinking that I should be doing something that I will definitely absolutely love doing because as much as I do care about children wanting to look after them if it's not the right thing for me to do then I'm not going to enjoy it and um, especially if I graduate um so after I did nursing I then went uh, to college um uh, at um the Dundee and Angus College to do a computer game development and then I moved on to Aberty in 2016 uh where I did game design and production um, I learned a lot over my time in Aberté. Um, I was given a lot of opportunities um, and I don't think I would have made it to where I was if I uh, wasn't given them while I was there, such as with the conglomerate stuff. Um, after, well, near the end of uni, I uh, had an internship at Outplay, which is a games company in Dundee. And then after that, I did another internship at Bogside Sands. Um, 
and then that's where I had the internship and then before I graduated I moved on to full-time. Um, yeah that's so cool that you got the opportunity to like stay with them and they would support you as well. Yeah yeah it was really good. Um, mm. Do you want me to just talk about what I've been up to since graduating or do you want to talk about where you studied? Um, well, I feel like I've already covered that a bit because I was at Duncan and Jordanson yeah. um, and I pre pretty much did textiles the whole time. <laughs> so, um, what about uh, where? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could just yeah, move that here. Yeah. So yeah. Um, since I've graduated, um, well, I've been at Pocket Size Hands um, since the start. Well, since before I graduated, um, I'm thinking about it would have been March or April, I want to say, that I went full time. Um, and then my, I was still completing my honours uh, while I was working there. Um, since then, I've worked on a, numerous different projects. I can't talk about them all because of um, NDA, but I've been doing like a variety of completely different things. So I'll talk about three here. Um, no Danger um, was one of the things that I've done, which is a choose your own adventure game, um, which is aimed at schools and like youth groups to try and teach young people about the dangers of knife knife carrying specifically um so on that project i was helping to do the the, the, the design on um how the game should flow and mm -hmm. all the mini games and stuff that were in there um so that's been out um and being used in schools and youth groups at the moment um a more traditional game that i've worked on um was P pocket mortys um, Pocket Size Hands uh, started on that project last year um, where we've been doing um, live ops on it, which is just because um, it's a live game, it's a mobile game, so it gets updates regularly. Um, so we've been working on those. Um, so I've been designing new features, quality of life features, new characters, and I've also done quality assurance on that as well. And then another thing, which is completely different from all games, um, is I've been doing helping on the UI design and prototyping for Smart View, um, which is an augmented reality technology, which is going, which is planned to be helping um, farmers be able to identify uh, their cows using a pole lens. Um, mm. So that's been interesting working on that. And I, I never thought I'd be doing anything to do with farming um, when I went into games. <laughs> um, so it's been very interesting, but uh, I, I need to do a lot of, different things because I'm at an indie studio um the projects that I work on are all completely di di different but I learn so much each time and I can apply so much stuff to each project going forward mm -hmm. that's so cool it's, and it's really good to have the opportunity to like wear different hats within the place that you're working because it means that you get like I suppose if you're working for a bigger company then you're gonna have like one job if you're in a smaller mm -hmm. company or you're, or you're working like with by yourself or like with one or two people like you get the opportunity to like really branch out and mm -hmm. maybe actually something you do you'll, you'll like even more than what you're doing at the moment or like you'll you'll discover a new thing which is really cool mm -hmm. yeah because I take it you need to do well wear a lot of hats because it's just you by yourself yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's like the thing I'm good at is the thing I do the least of <laughs> mm -hmm. everything else is just like worrying that I'm not doing other things properly or it's fine though I, I really enjoy it <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> not bother that's... but um yeah um so the bit underneath that about the yeah. language of collaboration so we were talking about like different ways that we work and mm -hmm. um and, I, and so there's this kind of prioritization graph Connie that you mentioned to me which I thought was so useful yeah and it's like because I was saying about how I'm so bad at managing my time and I just kind of lose track of things <laughs> like so much I have to write everything down but then I like forget where I've written it all that stuff <laughs> um but yeah this this kind of this graph like the way it splits everything up it just makes so much sense <laughs> I can't believe that. yeah I, I'm also really bad at prioritization and looking like taking a step back from projects and trying to think about everything so mm -hmm. I'm kind of the same with you there but it's just it's a super handy tool for um per, just prioritizing and seeing which ones will be the best things to spend most of my time on or to at least focus on at that point mm -hmm. yeah and like your your process where, where it's your iterative design and everything mm -hmm. 
Um, can you can you explain that? Because like I look, I was trying to look at it. Was, oh. Yeah, so I'm just gonna make sure that I don't accidentally move things. Okay, cool. Um, so like this is just an overall kind of way um, that I kind of think about design. So first of all, I'll have a problem. The problem could be um, I want to design a character which I don't know does this. Uh, so the first stage will be like the research stage where I think about it and I'll try and think of the things that I don't know. Um, and then the next stage is after that, I'll then research and then I'll probably get to the point of the thing that I'm wanting to do. Um, so like initially when I've got ideas, I'll get maybe like a whole load of different ways that I could do something, but then I'll refine it down. So then I, I get like, I'll get a really specific plan of what I then need to do, which is here. And then the main bit is the, the develop and deliver bit where I'll be um, trying things out, trying to work it out and see if it works. But then if I realize that it doesn't work and I then have to do more research, I then know that I can go back and then I can kind of keep going in a loop. I either yeah. can go in a loop between the, the areas by themselves or just as a whole thing, if I'm here, I can then realize, oh, I need to go back again. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it makes total sense. And it's like, that's actually a really clever way of putting it out there. Um, I'm sure actually that's how I do it as well. Yeah. I was just looking at that and for some reason it didn't make sense. I was like, oh my God. Um, but that, but yeah, that's so cool to like have it so clearly written down like that. So but my version of this <laughs> was this one. Um, so... <clears throat> So ideally, so this is when I'm like making prints <clears throat> kind of at their core and starting a new thing. So I always start off with the sketchbook and at uni I really was not into doing the sketchbook bit because I wanted to just do the big final thing and make something mm -hmm. look really cool. But like, you know, obviously you have to do the work before you can yeah. get there. You have to get from A to B. And actually like, I remember, so if you go down slightly to the other A to B bit, um, I remember my, my tutor in fourth year saying like so you're at A and you want to go to B and you think it's gonna be really easy because you've got like a vague idea on how to get there mm -hmm. and she was like what actually happens though with a lot of creative people is you try to go to A to B but then you end up going like in like a million circles and back mm -hmm. to front and everything and and you spend half the time going oh this is great oh no this is so bad this is great this is great oh that's awful and it just kind of you're up and down constantly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was like if you practice you can actually get from a to b smoothly <laughs> it's just like how <laughs> <laughs> because actually like when i when i when i create prints um like the idea is you do a sketchbook you gather photographs objects drawings um i try and work out like what is it about it that i find interesting so like for example if i take i, I took these photographs when i was in australia um, around this um, warehouse I was working in mm -hmm. and it was also industrial that area but there were some like stunning flowers just like in amongst all these mm -hmm. like horrible brick buildings they weren't even nice brick buildings it was just all it was all bits it, was, it wasn't great um but it's just the sort of juxtaposition that's what I quite like in things it's like kind mm -hmm. of fully shapes with like built up areas um that's like the kind of core of what inspires me even though it might not really come across in my work that's mm -hmm. the thing I always look for and find exciting mm -hmm. and then it would go on to like developing ideas and it's like so so from this these shapes which I find really interesting or from this composition I found interesting from this photograph mm -hmm. I'm like, how, how can I like make that into am I gonna like draw it am I gonna <clears throat> am I gonna like do collage am I gonna use the actual photograph itself like mm -hmm. how can I like develop that and then I would like maybe try that in a few different ways um and just go through that progress go, go through that progress as a process sorry um until I have something which I want to make into the sort of final motif and like maybe it's repeated maybe it's like a kind of one-off print um but yeah so it, it is, there's a lot of different ways you can do it <clears throat> mm -hmm. I just end up going back around in circles yeah that's um, what I do it was, yeah. it, was, it was just interesting that we like we spoke about this and even though what we do is completely different it's just the way that we do it is very similar yeah um 
yeah maybe we should move on a bit to like our the sort of issues that we've discovered because yeah. there's a lot of like sexism issues we've found in like both um yeah. in like both industries mm-hmm. yeah um so for for games I'll start with um like many female characters are quite heavily sexualized and this is an issue for me because when as I was saying earlier like when I went after school I went into child nursing um that was because even though I did my work experience at a game studio when it when I turned like that age like 17 whatever it was that I was picking my subjects I then thought oh I I can't go into games because I I'm a girl and girls either don't play games or they just aren't in games and it's just because like you know if you're not able to see yourself in these games um it's I've written a bit here uh, oh no um so it would with girls not seeing people like themselves in games or playing with other people like themselves um it would further just cement the idea in their head that games aren't for girls and they're not made by girls um so it just keeps it perpetuates the disbalance of gender um in the games industry um it's like 28 percent of uh females in the 50 28 percent of people in the games industry are people who identify as, as female um even though women make up 50 percent of people who actually play games um so like would a more th- diverse team be able to help with this um this was something that i found um which i found quite interesting of um if you ask a group of eighth grade girls which is about um 12 to 13 of what they think someone who make games looks like they look like this but then if you ask a couple of girls if you ask girls who are a few years older they'll draw them as men um which is quite sad and then looking at here uh if you're asked about well a group of girls were asked about their interest in making games and how it just goes away and it's same with all these um so that kind of links on to we uh, a discussion that we were having about um sorry my internet's kind of going a bit funky um yeah if you want to lead on to your bit sorry oh yeah sure um so i was working at dundee design festival this year and me and my friend set up a workshop <clears throat> in which people could um customize clothing using heat transfer vinyl kind of similar to the way that i was talking about earlier um, and there was this group of boys that came in, they were all like 10 years old and they were so cute and they would come in like every day and like bring like all their friends with them and they were like, oh my God, like, oh, this is so cool. I really like, well, can you cut me a skull? Can you cut me, can you write my name? And like really wanted to like do this clothing workshop and a bit like effectively, I, I was just, I was just really surprised because I just thought like, that's really sweet that these wee boys want to do that. But I feel like even in the next like two years, like when they go to high school, that kind of thing would be like, oh, you want to go and do that? That's a bit, that's a bit girly. Why are you going to go to a print design workshop? Um, mm-hmm. Because <clears throat> textiles has that thing about being like women's work, especially kind of decorative textiles. Because I suppose mm-hmm. like tailors and stuff are all historically male, just like that's just how it is. But then like, and then, I don't know, in like the 1800s, 1700s, 1800s, when you just imagine all these women, you know, sitting in grand houses and doing their needlework and like, um, and I think that's just really stuck, that narrative that decorative textiles are like a female thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And even in like my class at uni, there was like one guy in the class of 30 or like just over Mm -hmm. 30. Um, And that just seems to be a sort of recurring theme. Yeah. Uh, People are put off by... You know, that's that's a, that's a girly thing mm-hmm. um, yeah and, uh, the whole thing with like Harry style is like wearing kind of like feather boas and that I, I put a few pictures but like isn't it just strange that like that's like a really big deal but then in the 70s they were all doing that and um <clears throat> like how's it a big deal do you know what I mean mm-hmm. it's very strange <laughs> yeah it's just it's interesting that like we have par- well mirrors of the issues in the industry with like in the games there's not enough women um and then well in games it's mostly straight white males who are in games um mm-hmm. and then it's just for in fashion it's mostly females especially like in 
well, when you're going to study. Yeah, um, studying. Yeah. Then at the top, it's like a lot of a lot of men as well. It, it just seems <laughs> to be like that. There's this kind of weird stigma when kids are like kind of teenagers. Um, where they don't want to like pursue that because that's like a girly thing and it's the same with games where it's like I don't want to pursue that only boys do that yeah um, and so yeah. like I think in terms of like what we're thinking of like for next steps um we were just think we were I mean we can't like solve this issue just being corny as much as we would like to <laughs> but um, <laughs> we were <clears throat> thinking about like making because because the kind of the main theme that came of this was like we want people want to see themselves within games and like I mean that's what other people who have been talking tonight have been saying it's like mm-hmm. you want to see yourself reflected back into the games you're playing and um personalization of like avatars and stuff is such a big is such a big component to that and that's like kind of along the same lines as personalizing clothing because it's like this is who I am this is like what I want to show to the world and is there is there possibly a way that we can like combine that and make it into like a game um a game not just for gamers maybe the game is for designers maybe mm-hmm. the game is like to like for for like even like like young kids maybe like school kids to like create things but like through a game mm-hmm. um and yeah you were saying you found that design tool about getting shirts printed yeah like the, there's um uh game that I play um, called Jackbox where um, one of the mini games is that you all well it's a multiplayer game where people draw things on on their phones and then you can then send off to that web to their website to get whatever you drew printed onto a t-shirt um so I think that kind of thing could be interesting for just yeah just implementing it into a game and then you can have it in a game as well as in real life I think it's important for like to make it a thing that's not explicitly just for gamers or explicitly just for people who are into fashion. Yeah. Um, because then that opens it up and then that'll allow more people to be like to know about the industries and that they can see, oh, maybe I can do this, maybe I like doing this, that kind of thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally it does. Um just like one one point I want to add. Um I, I saw this article earlier and it was about how this the MA course at Central St. Martin's changed its name from like future textiles to future materials. And like how that kind of even even changing it from textiles, which is sort of associated with feminine things, to materials. Materials is like kind of more more masculine or, or more neutral. And it's just quite funny how like even the way that you speak about things can like make quite a big difference yeah wow like, that's really interesting yeah yeah <laughs> cool. hello. Uh, hello hate to interrupt but that is all the time we have oh, for I didn't realize the time this collaboration sorry it's really no 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 it was great like it, it was really interesting chat uh i think we are now going to hand over to Safia for a quick final Q&A. Well, hey, um, so I don't think we have time, unfortunately, for any, <laughs> any question. But, um, but yeah, the conversation was amazing and you covered so many, so many different subjects. I'm sure that the, the, <laughs> the guests will have had a lot of fun cool information <laughs> i hope so that, thank you for this it, it was really good the yeah, conversations that kate and i had were really good yeah it's been a total pleasure yeah. Bonnie. It's, really, it's been great and thank you to all the arcadia people as well thank you so much that was yeah so so good especially the kate and connie that was a great way to end uh our, in today's program um, and watch this space because we will be coming back to to uh, Kate and Connie as the collaboration kind of unfolds in the weeks ahead. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for your time, uh, Kate and Connie. We'll say goodbye to you now um, as we then just uh, prepare our final uh, thank yous. Uh, so um, yeah, it is the end, end of interlace, I'm afraid. Uh, we would like to thank our, all our amazing guests for a wonderful evening. You've all been great. Uh, we hope this is the start of some of more cross sector conversations. We'll certainly do our bit to kind of facilitate more of these conversations at Biome Collective. Um, I would also like to uh, thank the team. That includes Tom, 
uh, supporting with the visual uh, and audio support. Susie, co-creation and production, especially early on. Yourself, Gino and Safia doing an amazing job this evening. Um, and Darshana too. Um, and a big shout out to the team at Biome Collective and Scotland Redesign. And also our funders, uh, Event Scotland. Uh, lastly, uh, after saying goodbye, I'm happy to say that uh, we will be back soon at Arcade Night 2021. Uh, should be December the 9th. Uh, so watch the space and thank you. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. See you later.